This is the cheapest 3D printer I could find on the internet, the Easy Freed X1. And in this video, we're gonna be putting it through its paces and we aren't holding back. I wanna see what a $70 printer can really do. And if I'm not happy with it, I'm sending it straight back. Now, once I decided to do this video, I set about looking for the cheapest 3D printer I could find that was available to me in the UK. And when I found the Easy 3D on Amazon, I was immediately excited by some of the reviews, like this one here. Absolutely horrible. Nothing works with this thing. And this happy customer says, tried the print stick on the bed, but still not working. Rubbish. As you can imagine, all very encouraging, but let's see what it's actually like. The printer was on offer and available next day. So a short wait and my printer had arrived. And when it did, I got my first surprise. This thing literally weighs nothing. I wasn't even convinced it was my printer. I mean, it's tiny. Out of the box, it's pretty nice. The packaging is all well presented and the printer itself comes in just three parts. All you have to do for assembly is slot the X and Z axis into the base of the printer, pop the two bolts that come in the plastic pouch in and then tighten them up. Remember, this whole thing's plastic, so don't go mad on tightening those screws up or you'll just break it. Then clip your electronics together and just like that, assembled. You do get this filament spool holder too, which sits here, but that's definitely not gonna hold a decent spool of filament. So I'm not gonna use that. Now it's time for the real juicy content. Let's go and get this thing fired up. First, we need to go to our workshop. Perfect. Now, I already mentioned the size of this printer and I wasn't joking. This thing is tiny, so small I can actually get it inside my Bamboo Lab X1. And it's incredibly light. I can literally lift this thing with one finger. This also means it's a great space saver, so you can pop it in even the smallest of spaces and it's ultra portable. Whilst it's firing up, let's point out some of the main features here. The X1 has a 100 by 100 by 100 build volume, so you aren't gonna be printing anything big on there. But I do like that it has a direct drive extruder system and a magnetic flexible build plate. I mean, these are some of the features I get on my more expensive printers. All the printer parts are very well enclosed. The extruder is completely sealed and the nozzle only has a bare minimum exposed metal on show. It's all nice and simple to use as well. Before you start printing, you need to level the bed, which is obviously completely manual on a $70 printer. Just hit the home button, then switch off the machine and do the usual paper under the extruder trick in each corner. I'm gonna make it slightly lower than normal because I've got a feeling the bed adhesion on this is gonna be pretty bad. To get a print going, you need to use this hugely complex control box, which has a whole four buttons on it. Okay, so it's pretty simple. The home button obviously homes the extruder, the plus arrow loads the filament in, the minus arrow loads the filament out, and the play button basically starts your print. The printer does come with this small sample of PLA, and I wasn't gonna use it because, well, it looks awful. But let's do this properly. If you've just bought this printer, you're gonna be using the filament they give you and a model off the SD card just to get you going. That was my plan at least, until it decided to catch fire. Well, not exactly, but that filament supplied that I'd already thought looked ropey, seemed to be smoking and burning as it was coming through the nozzle. So I got rid of that and loaded up some Zero PLA Pro, which I know gives amazing results on my other printers. The default file on the SD card was a little rocket, so I set it off and left the printer to do its thing. And when I came back about an hour later, what? Look how good that is. That was my genuine reaction. I was amazed it even printed first time, let alone at this quality but it's time to push this little thing a bit harder. To test for tolerances on our designs, we have this little quick print here, which will test supports, gaps, and stringing. The slicer itself is actually great. It's so simple that even without any slicer experience, you won't have any issues using it. You've got your load button here to add your STL file, and that will pop up in the print bed here so you can see the scale of it compared to the print volume. Click this slice button, which then gives you one key which is presets for fast, standard, or optimize. Or you can customize your settings, which I'm gonna do just to check and make sure there's no supports printed on this model. Hit slice once you're ready, and this will produce a G-code file, which the printer uses to actually print your model. Hit save to SD, eject your SD card, take it over to the printer, and hit print. Now, I know this might seem a bit mad, but for some kind of comparison, I'm gonna print the same model on my Bamboo Lab X1 and my Prusa Mark 3S. 
The fact that both these 3D printers are $900 plus new, the outcome is pretty obvious, isn't it? So I've just come back to check the prints a few minutes in and it's all looking pretty good. The Bamboo Lab is obviously streaking into the lead, but the Easy 3D is looking good too and it's not that far behind the Prusa. I did also hook up this old phone I've got to do a very simple time lapse so we can see exactly what happened during the printing on the Easy Freed. And here's the result. The raft just pops off nicely, as does the pre-made support. I did have to just cut a millimeter off the edge of support as it had squished a bit too much, but the whole thing just works. Comparing it to the other two printers, the Bamboo Lab did it lightning quick in about 14 minutes and the quality is really nice. And the Prusa, well, I mean, it just didn't work. I'm not slamming the Prusa here at all. It's arguably still my favorite printer, but this proves a great point, that no matter how much you spend on a printer, sometimes it will still not go as planned. The Easy Freed has missed a few tiny bits in the layers, and there's a bit of stringing, but this really isn't an easy model to print. There are 45 degree angles, overhangs, tight gaps, and this has done a good job. Now this is where I'd usually say, but let's get it even better. And then start going into technical settings in the slicer, ordering a heated bed, adding a part cooling fan, blah, 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 blah. But let's call a spade a spade here. This printer cost me $70 and is sold as an educational or beginner's printer. And that is exactly what you should expect. If you want to get into 3D printing, but want to see what it's all about first, then this is a great option. And I'm not going to agree with the reviews I mentioned earlier, but do be prepared to outgrow this printer pretty quickly. If you know you're likely to want to tinker around with your printer and upgrade it from day one, then personally, I wouldn't waste money on the X1 or doing that to the X1. I'd spend the extra hundred odd dollars and get either an Anycubic or a Creality printer. That does then leave one last question. Am I gonna be sending this thing back? Well, my absolute favorite thing about this printer is the whole concept of it. Because of its price, size, and safety features, I'm gonna keep it as my kids get older and use it to show them the world of 3D printing, which in my eyes easily makes it worth the $70 I paid for it, if not more. If you're on the fence on taking the plunge into 3D printing with the Easy 3D X1, I hope this helped a little bit with your decision. And if it has, or even if you've got something else from this video, hit subscribe below and we'll be back very soon with some more content.